and you zero. And this one was the invitation that, that, that we did um, at one of the tie-ins as well. And this was a very good exercise in using bias, as you can see, as you can see. And these are photographs taken by me and John around the, around the Primus lamp on the Gungala. Can you see they come out at night? Characterised by a little orange band around their head. I have seen these in such incredible numbers at Kaimian near Nimitabel, where, where they're all over the road, you'd almost be slippery in walking. Never seen, never seen it since. Uh, also on the Gungal, and I know that John and I had an experience once, and you lost the photograph, so I can't show it here, where <clears throat> these things, they were climbing up, flying up and flying up about two stories, and then almost diving down into the water. Never seen anything like it. And then they flutter their way all the way up and then dive down again into the water. And they're on, on us as well. And that was where the photographs were. Were, were they, they egg-laying or something, Doug? Were they egg-laying? They must have been egg-laying or, yeah. or, or, uh, or um, fertilising eggs in the air, what have you, I'm not sure. But you're able to see there, um, there's a typical imitation there, typical imitation, but as I say, you'd be fishing in the dark at night. <laughs> you, you don't hear, hear, do you at all, of people using uh, dops and fly hey, Dave, imitations. Do they have nymphal form? Do they exist on the water? Oh yes, the nymphal form. The nymphal form is the health elder life. So, so here, here we go here. There's the nymphal form. Yeah, right. Oh yes, and, uh, and uh, so so there's the imitation, and, and, and these are the toe biters, <clears throat> and the, in the 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 it would be the uh, what's the name of the river at Hampton, at the end of Wickety Wall Road the down fish. the bottom. That's the fish. That's the fish. That's the yeah. fish. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have been there fishing with other guys, not having any luck at all, at all kicked over some rocks, and there's Helgramites everywhere. So I said to all the guys, switch anything that's black, anything that's black. Now one of these things, holding onto it, it latched on, these, these uh, clamps, or whatever you want to call them, latched onto the, the edge of a ice cream container, and I was able to pick up the ice cream container by holding onto the, onto the Hel Helgramite. <laughs> now in New Zealand they grow to, to lengths like this, it's what they call it, a toe biter. They really bite? Oh yes, oh, yeah. yes, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the glossa and the um, carapin. And they're characterised by curling, the same as the, the same as the cat caddis as if they're rolling downstream. So the lesson for me is if I tie these again, <coughs> tie them on a curved hook. Don't use the straight hooks that the, I was, was showing you there. Whoops, hang on a minute. Yes, you see the, the imitation here? It's straight. Two wing cases and what, and what have you. But yes, that's okay when they're all relaxed. But as soon as they're kicked free and they're rolling down the current as you want them, as you want them to be, they curl. So a curved hook is the way to go. <clears throat> okay, so now I want to move to horse flies and march flies. Oh, yeah. One of my, my favourites. Um, and, these, and this is the Aussie variety, it's not the New Zealand blue bottle. You will see here, that's the colour, look it's buff. It's not blue, it's buff. Uh, these were flies that we were experimenting with at fly tying classes again, in, in learning how to tie wonder wings. And the pattern is perfect for tying a wonder wing. In case you're wondering, that's uh, Eugene Bison's ankle and that fly just stung him, <laughs> and it's actually dead. So I said, that'll make a great pic picture, hold still. <laughs> so we added some flies onto it, and, and, there's, a, and, and there's my, my latest version of it with the foam, the foam, and I discovered by sheer accident that rather than trying to, to tie these to exact length, tie them as long as you like and trim them, and you end up with extra legs and things. So if you trim your wonder wings, 
you're doing that with, with lots of ex, extra waves. But this uh, pro, proboscis is like a saw, and it's shaped just like a Roman gladius, and it hurts like hell. <laughs> as you know, as you know, when you get stung with these things. Don't go to the Tully River in Queensland. They'll oh. drive you out of the area. You have to go yeah, so, the water so there's my, I have fished with, uh, with this and I, I believe I was having more luck with this in summer than I was with hoppers. So oh, this is just, just, just as good as a ho hopper. In the snowy river and they like to bite through blue, blue jeans. Is that, is that the same fly? As a yeah, oh, yeah, 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 they like to bite have through blue jeans. They like blue jeans. Uh, yeah, yeah. They bite right through. <laughs> now, wolf beetles and boatmen, you'll see these around a fair bit. Uh, so there, there's a little McCoy. Now, this is a great little pattern. Grab yourself a box of Tiemco 101s, okay? And this is just a rice bead that you slide over the straight eye. And you just, you, know, you black on the back of it with a texture cut color, a couple of bites, a bit of dubbing, and Bob's your uncle. And uh, is it interesting how, you, and there's another one there, just a, a board of dubbing to stop the sliding of the, the bead, um, a, a, a philo plume on the front. And it's interesting, isn't it, how you remember a fly that, that if you catch a fish, you have a fish incident. <laughs> and, and this one for me was uh, on Thomas Holt Drive at Lake Lower where I put this uh, down beside a willow tree there and this fly just came out and banged it. It was a great thing. Every time I see this fly, I think of that fish. <laughs> Damsels and dragons now. Now, no molting goes on here, so it's an incomplete life cycle. Most of the prehistoric dinosaur type uh, flies don't have a, a, a pupation. They don't have it. And, the, and the, as you know, they found these in dinosaur times as well in, in uh, amber and what have you. That's a picture I took in the museum, actually, and they said nine to 17 months, taking months to years, depending on the temperature. <laughs> so these are crawling around under the, under the, under the water, um, eating any other insect or nymph they can find because they're carnivorous. Um, finally, they, uh, they hatch, and interesting, you'll notice with the adults, they only fly when the sunshine is shining. As soon as a cloud appears, they disappear. Bright sun, out they come again. We typically hardly ever use the adult, and there's an example of some of the cases that over on there. This was me experimenting, just, just to get the shape right. Fur, furry foam with a burner just to burn that shape. And this is a beauty here because it absorbs the water, it hangs around just sort of in the meniscus. And uh, <clears throat> remember John, you were with Peter Hayes and he said to you, where did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a sort of, yeah, it's imitative, all right, not a bad, not a bad imitation. Put some legs on it, I guess, but, but, but it works. These uh, mud eyes, incidentally, they're jet propelled. So there's no issues with hemorrhoids with, with these insects. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a photo of an Oberon dam. This is quite interesting. And you'll see that the nymph has crawled on the top of the stem here, and the adult has, has crawled out of the back, and, he's, and he or she has dropped, can't see the claspers, he or she is uh, drying their wings. Now, guess what the spiders are doing around the edges? of Oberon. They're building webs all around the top. I wonder what they're attempting to trap and eat. Not bad, are they? <laughs> These spider webs everywhere to catch mud eyes. Okay. Moving on to damsels here now. Stomach contents here. You can see the damsel there, the stomach. Can't see any Perdigon nymphs in there. In the stomach contents. No Perdigon hatch? <laughs> no, no, no Perdigon hatch, no. And there's a typical invitation. The, 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 the damsels are delicate, and they're delicate and thin. Whoops. 
The damsel's a delicate and thin, as you can see. So all the imitations are sort of more delicate and thin. There's a picture I took of one hatching, in fact, at, at Four Springs Lagoon in Tassie. And that's the same uh, uh, fly. He's crawled out, and now he's <coughs> here, he's uh, drying himself. And he's saying, hello world. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the best imitation of a damsel neck is a Muzz Wilson pattern. And all he does, marabou, flex cement, and a little bit of dubbing and, and just a wing case, and Bob's your uncle. And that's a great, it's got the thinness, the, the delicate look to it, and it's very easy to tie. <laughs> 